I'm going to use my big voice. We've got one speaker, um, so I'm going to raise my voice. If it's too loud, well, I think that's probably a bit tough, actually, because I've got to make myself heard at the back. If you are outside and you want to be part of the meeting, then please come through and get yourself a table. So, let me introduce myself. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, today's meeting is open to the public. Warm welcome to everyone around. Uh, we've got quite a sizable turnout. That's great. And I know there are folks outside as well. My name is Councillor Brian Holmshaw, and I'm the chair of this particular local area committee. The theme this time is going to be health and well-being, but there'll be more of that later. So I'm going to start with a couple of thank yous. I'd like to say thank you to all of you for coming in and giving up your evening. Uh, I often say we're in competition with all sorts of different media, um, including things like Netflix. So, you know, you chose Netflix, uh, yes, over Netflix, so that's fantastic. Thank you for coming along. Also, thank you to Yellow Arch for hosting our public event. Uh, that's excellent of them. And we have possibly the trendiest of the lack venues ever. I'm also grateful to Kinker, uh, Kelham Island uh, Neats and Community Alliance, for working with us, in particular with my colleague Deal, to bring the event to uh, this area of Neats and Kelham Island. You will have been handed um, <clears throat> question slips on arrival. So please could I request that these are handed back to a member of staff after the breakout sessions, so towards the end of the meeting. We also have a notice board of up-and-coming events during Black History Month, which the lack of organised and funded in partnership with various community groups, and the notice board is beyond the arch there, just the other side. We also have a free lantern workshop in Kelham Island this Sunday coming, uh, which will go towards the uh, Parkwood Springs Lantern Festival. And we, we've helped to, uh, to support that with, with funding. So before I ask the other councillors to introduce themselves, I'm going to hand over to Claire in Democratic Services, who is next to me, to read out the housekeeping arrangements. Thank you, Chair. Can I please request that mobile phones and other such equipment are switched to silent mode so as to not disturb the conduct of the meeting? There's no fire test planned for today. If there is an emergency evacuation, please take instruction from council staff present. The toilets are on the way out to the right of the exit, uh, the disabled men's and ladies. <clears throat> the meeting today is open to the public and will be streamed live and for subsequent broadcast via the council's website. You should be aware that the Council is a data controller under the Data Protection Act. Data collected during the webcast will be retained in accordance with the Council's published policy. By entering the meeting room, you are consenting to be filmed and to the possible use of those images and sound recordings for webcasting. Thanks, Jeff. Thank, thank you, Claire. Could I uh, please ask uh, council members and officers around the table to introduce themselves to the meeting? Uh, starting with you on the end, Henry. Um, I'm Henry Nottage. I'm a ward member for Hillsborough. Hi, everybody. My name's Tom Hunt. I'm a councillor for Walkley Ward. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name's John Wright, and I'm also a councillor for Walkley Ward. Hello everyone, my name's Ruth Mercero and I'm a councillor for City Ward. Hi everyone, I'm Adios, Community Services Manager for Central. Hi Claire Cummins from Democratic Services. Hello. Laura McLean, I'm a councillor for Walkley Ward. Uh, Douglas Johnson, councillor for the ward with the best venues here. So, item, <clears throat> excuse me, 
Uh, so, item two uh, is apologies for absence, and I'll hand over to Claire for that. Tonight, we've received apologies mm. from councillors Martin Fitz, Angela Argenzio, Christine Gilligan, Kubo. Thank you. And item three is uh, exclusion of press and public, and there are no items which require the exclusion of press and public. Item four, do any members uh, sitting around the table wish to declare an interest in any items of business on the agenda? No, so there's no response to that one. Good. <clears throat> uh, so item five, uh, and I'm going to hand over to uh, my colleague Adil Zaman to give a short update on the central lack spend uh, as part of a budget report. Thank you, Chair. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Adil. I'm the Community Services Manager. Um, so it's just a short verbal update on the Central LAC budget for 2024-25 for this financial year. Um, just to give some context to this report, um, the local area committees were um, put together in 2021. There are seven across the city. Each local area committee has a budget of £100,000 in terms of local area committee funding. Um, for Central, over the past few years and this year, uh, the committee have decided previously However, we will vote on a decision. Uh, previously, the £100,000 has been equally split across four wards, which is £25,000. Can everybody hear me? Um, yeah, so this funding goes towards local community projects. So there's various partners within the room, such as colleagues from Zest, Kinka, we have Mental Mate Boxing, we have Parish Nursing, who you'll be meeting a bit later. So this goes towards grassroots groups in your areas to try and deliver community projects and also engage with local community to take you on the journey with us. Um, so there's two recommendations within this report. One is to agree the approach to set out the use of this year's budget uh, towards the Central Local Area Committee Community Plan. There's five priorities in the plan. One is environment, followed by transport and highways, business employment and skills, communities and neighbourhoods. Um, so there's five priorities, and this money is towards the community plan. So that's uh, to get agreement from the committee. The second uh, recommendation is for the committee and the chair to uh, extend the budget allocation. So in previous years, this has been £5,000. Anything above £5,000 would need to have come to a public meeting for agreement by the committee. In this paper, it recommends that that expenditure is extended to £10,000. So that will give myself, uh, as the local area committee manager, agreement to extend that from 5,000 to 10,000 um, if agreement is made by the committee. Thank you, Chair. So um, <clears throat> that actually needs a, a decision in public. Um, so we should proceed by uh, probably, uh, I think raising, raising the hands would probably be the appropriate thing rather than going around the table. So. Yes, I, th I think, okay, so we've already got one agreement there. Uh, yes, so I think raise hands if you agree uh, with that decision. Seems to be, yeah. seems to be agreed. Okay. So that's actually one of the few decisions that we, we make around this table. The vast majority of what we're going to be doing from now on will be focused on you, the public, as well. <coughs> Having said that, we're going to have two presentations first, um, both a maximum of 10 minutes, please, 
uh, so we can get feedback from people later on. Uh, there'll be item six and item seven, and the first presentation will be from the Sheffield and Rotherham Wildlife Trust, and it's a presentation on green prescribing, that's Nature for Health, and it's going to be by Cassa Townsend, who is the Green Social Prescribing Programme Coordinator, it's quite a mouthful, at the Sheffield and Rotherham Wildlife Trust. So are you okay to be able to do the presentation, uh, Cassa? I think wherever you... Well, so long as you can see the screen and the public can see the screen and councillors are going to have to swivel round and look at the screen. Shall I do a one minute? I'm the Sheffield Communities Officer at Sheffield Rodham Wildlife Trust uh, talking about a new arm of a project about nature recovery Sheffield and the power for people and nature. So we decided today just to bring a little bit of nature into the room, only a tiny bit and nothing that's moving around or, you know, although the little birds at the front do squeak, they're uh, little uh, garden birds that have uh, their own song inside them, if you did fancy a little squeeze of a cuddly toy we've put a bit of foliage around the room as well it's just something to demonstrate how we take a bit of nature with us everywhere we go um, we've done some slides and we've tried to keep them really visual lots of pictures I haven't put text up there really not much anyway um, I haven't put a lot of detail about the program that I'm working on at the moment but some of you will have heard about it if not it's worth looking online if you're not aware that South Yorkshire was one of seven national sites that was chosen in 2021 to be funded by government putting money into seven regions around the country and it was called test and learn green social prescribing test and learn and it's worth st stressing that it was money around finding solutions for people with mental health support needs uh, very you know focused on mental health support needs so for the last this is year four we had funding again for this year and I've been involved in the program since last April so we had to pitch for funding again the funding wasn't promised for anything like more than one year as you will uh, probably be familiar with generally but the money came and it's still there and so predominantly what the money was for to, was to pump grants out into VCSE voluntary community sector organizations for providing green activity to support people with mental health and well-being lots and lots of different ways that that's been happening zest it's great to see you guys here because we know that some of the funding for your current green activity in the zest um, community location has come from this program which is brilliant there is an element of data collection you know showing the impact evidencing the impact what is the impact on nhs services how can green activity help people outside of medical solutions outside of clinical settings so that's the principle really i did put we all like a little venn diagram don't we so you've got natural surroundings we have lots of green space woodlands parks open spaces in sheffield meaningful activities being run by very much grassroots organizations across south yorkshire so it's a south yorkshire wide program we've got the social context being with other people, mixing socially, getting support, peer support, having people around you that you can contact, uh, have contact with and reduce isolation, which can help with mental health. So that's where the middle part comes in, green social prescribing. And what we know now really is that, yes, there are formal pathways for this. Uh, you can be prescribed through um, a GP or a community support worker or a link worker. But you can also find these things for yourselves. And we're, we're focusing a little bit more on finding out more about how that works for people this year. Really pushing out the information about 
what activities are going on. We're running training as well for support workers, link workers, health professionals um, to help them support people in communities to find activities that can be beneficial to them. So I haven't any more slides like this, but the next few slides are just really some images. So what does it look like for people? We're going to be discussing some of this on the tables uh, shortly, so there'll be a chance for you to have a think about these things in your area, what it might mean to you personally. Uh, walking, growing, fishing, planting, all these sorts of things that get people outdoors. Yeah, the next slide is just, this poor fellow looks like he's been a bit squashed between some large plants, but yeah, he's having a good old hug of a tree uh, outdoors. So getting outdoors in nature, very seasonal picture here. Uh, for this time of year, finding conkers, gathering, looking, searching, being out there. Things that I suppose sometimes maybe we take for granted intuitively that being outdoors, fresh air is good for you. But when you pick apart a little bit more, it's interesting to look at what's come through as some of the barriers for people on the programme. We're really looking at that as well. We're not just saying, get out of nature, it's brilliant for everybody. It's really about looking at what's stopping people doing that in communities as well and if there are barriers around transport access accessibility of green spaces facilities you know there's a lot to pick apart with the feedback that comes from these programs that are operating around South Yorkshire I'm going to hand to Lucy just to say a little bit more so it's about the broader work of the Wildlife Trust in partnership with others around nature's recovery particularly yeah I guess this is, this um Nature Recovery Sheffield and also Nature Recovery Rotherham, a nod to that as well, this is happening in Rotherham too, is really born out of people's connection that they've experienced with nature and it came from the local communities themselves wanting to take action for nature and um, it was born out of wanting to feel like they are heard and that they can take action in their local community and some of the issues issues that have been going on around in their great local green spaces or grey spaces and it came about uh, partly about like a fear of nature being uh, of us losing nature and we it's been a grow it's basically it's a message of hope and it's a movement and it's not necessarily about the um, Sheffield and Rotherham Wildlife Trust, it's about local people, it's about communities having a voice and we're, facilitate, we, we're facilitating that. It's not about um, us as an organisation, it may have some skills or knowledge to help with if, if that's what people want and it's about co-creation of projects together and there was a recognition that we need to, the, the movement has grown and there's a recognition that we need to expand the movement. People who um, are not accessing nature, and I know we're doing that through uh, providing advice and support and training, and um, in terms of resources or just connecting people up um, or amplifying local voices, so showing case studies of what people can do in their local or are already doing, and um, bringing more diverse audiences in, and really broadening participation. Um, so it's not the, the loudest people doing it and we're recognising that everyone's doing important things and it's just how we can build that movement and really about communities rippling out and, and um, discovering what they can do in their, um, to help nature because it helps people and that's what people are feeding back to us. They're coming to us because um, nature is important to them in so many different ways, um, socially, culturally, and um, so the movement and the projects that were funded by four foyers for community, by the community fund is about us co-creating activities that our community needs and collectively, collectively helping the nature recovery movement. Um, one minute. One minute. And so if you'd like to find out more, there's, lots of, there's a bit of information on the website and there's a community action for nature map where you can see where businesses, community groups, individuals, it's, it's welcome, it's, 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 move, it's movement about everyone and it's supposed to be inclusive, um, so it will people what's you know, going on and that's the map so far and it's really to, so you can't see each of them anymore because there's so much stuff going on that's the, and um, last slide would be, um, 
So there's about 1,800 people signed off but on the, to the actual nature of the movement. But in terms of, um, you can see a few stats there of what people have done and added to the map. And there's also a nature recovery commun community toolkit that we're developing um, to give you advice for um, local people, businesses, and how to take action, which we're developing and tailoring at the moment um, to, to uh, co creating with lots of, of different groups. Great. Well, that might happen. Is it, is it still on? Can everybody hear? Um, thank you, Lucy. Yeah, it's just worth saying as well, that's part of a really, you know, high-level partnership strategy as well, isn't it, for Nature's Recovery, which involves the combined mayoral authority and the South Yorkshire Mayor and the Council and lots of other organisations um, as were listed, well, cited up there. So, yeah, it's really exciting. Have a look at the map, see if your local area is on. If you know the action happening, I think you could either add that or touch and get local community action um, feature put your just I know there's a lot of things for Brian before we go in the table this is just the people bring their lives in, into the is hence the you know with it sometimes for out but we Joy, your curiosity, you joy. They're kind of green works, you know. People have they got needs met? It's no. Be why there's a load of recognize that this single problem, but you know it's. Both of you. That, that's questions in the. I'm going to be taking because I'm saying we're going to so back and have and then that third where. It will uh, that's one of the pretty sure that we very allied but also organizations. So we'll get and it so have set um, the presentation it's on from from uh, head of the and he's more about coming forward the area again and afterwards we can approach raise uh, that be done uh, forward to thank you so yeah good morning uh, head of I've heard this people have been to this and I'll try a minutes background to look there in 2020 um, and some of the area committees and they are rotated is we're established engage able local and it was all making into the that was the uh, meetings Had the meeting. We've done a period of time. I think that's the meeting. So things have evolved. Back and this meeting. This was is today. That 
You are able to extend the show. Trying to do things. Encourages with people. Team team meetings. Actually trying to be relevant to the local area. Also being a local community. That's on the wall. That on the table. Council is interactive with kind of being a real thing actually as an organization. The other thing useful for presented on soul or and not just services organizations which opportunity area. Okay, anything a period of time the government element, certain decisions, formal, isn't quite more reliable. Able to act front and there's a so creative for people. Um, we are so different areas, sort of actually like small across the city areas where. Um, to different, really get different patients. Um, you see that we need to certain things in the and fair. So many people uh, meetings with so again, I like to from uh, the time, it's a nice. Recently, well, so the news of the media just on web streams live. You can also put up our product. We also have the majority or watch maybe elected. Um, and in essence, at the beginning, it's being made main decisions. Have to change the revised uh, end of the hundred day the one. So, so this piece of work uh, public programming check has to look at the to look and organization future to the field. I feel is around local area cities in the world for that we're doing this it will type work is about organization face so obviously slightly different uh, as council is coming to I'm happy people have got to this sort of um, and the to consider if this is how what um, brings you to the proved um, is the thing better in around the time and also you know, this is the enable working for you and, and sort of this that are relevant. So, I'm just taking it obviously over to the team. Really want to some sort of come in and have a discussion. Um, we we uh, uh, if you're going to point uh, around the room. I mean, there's various things to improve, I think. Can we improve? Well, we just think some small and that's that. So, I think that's we have other you ask and stop, and that's who table discussion. We're going to around 
40 minutes to Casa, who is going to explain um, what's going to happen around the, the tables. Or at least between us, we'll be able to do that. Yes. Thank you. Sorry. Uh, yeah, there is about 40 minutes, but I thought we would break things up a little bit by doing it in stages. So I think a chance for you all to just, you know, relax a bit, have a chat with people around you, grab a drink, as Brian said. But I think that we take the first question first and then we'll I'll, I'll help people to just, you know, have a voice feedback. Um, and we'll have a bit of a chat about that first question, if that's OK. And then we'll go back to your tables to talk about the second two, which are a little bit more linked. Is that OK? I'm so t I hope I'm not disrupting too much, but I'll, I'll help people to, to stick to time with that, I think. So for the first question, um, what do you feel are the benefits to health and well-being? I was talking particularly about mental health, but of course it's about physical health as well. It's health and well-being in the round for this evening. So what are the benefits of connecting with nature, being outdoors, fresh air, Whatever it is that that means to you, what are the benefits to health and well-being? What have you experienced? What do you see around you? What do you know about the, the services and support and what there is that, that can benefit people in terms of nature connection, getting outdoors, being physical, connecting with green, blue. We should include blue as well. It's not just about green spaces. It's about the waterways and, and how you can connect with blue spaces as well. So if we have maybe just five minutes, or if it takes a little bit longer, if people do want to break in a drink, that kind of thing, we can give it a little bit longer. Is that okay? Thank you. Five minutes or so. Right. I'm going to mention who we've got around, who will be there on the tables to help with the facilitation. So obviously, we, we, the Wildlife Trust, um, people who are around today include the, uh, the parish nurses, uh, based at Carver Street, have, have a stall uh, through that way. Uh, we've got Sheffield Wednesday Community Programme, who are outside. Uh, Mental Mate Boxing, also outside. Zest Centre, you're around, you're at the front here. Um, but I'm, I'm expecting you to be either over in your stall, which is through that way, or maybe if you want to join in with the facilitation tables as well. Uh, and the Percy Street Collective as well. In addition to that, I've just been notified that we've got the uh, drugs and alcohol team uh, who are around uh, to, to answer your questions. Uh, the group is called Likewise. Okay. Uh, and finally, what I'm going to suggest is councillors. We are going to be short on chairs. So if you want to join a particular table and you want to sit down, take your own chair with you. <laughs> Just a suggestion. Okay. So the webcast is going to be paused for this session. So we won't be doing any recording for that, and we'll restart the webcast when we gather back to do the feedback. Anything I've missed? A deal. <laughs> okay. Now, uh, if you want a time, um, we're going to aim for 20 past seven. That's slightly less than 45 minutes. The tables, we have to be moving round for the tables. Yeah, Casa?
All right, we are about to restart. I've been out once. Claire's been out once. Yes, is that working? Yeah, please. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, right, so we are going to start now, and uh, we're going to restart the recording. There will be someone travelling around with a roving microphone. For each bit of feedback, two minutes, so condense what you want to say to two minutes, please. Right, uh, so uh, is anyone volunteering to give feedback first? Does anyone want to put their hand up? And are really eager to tell us all what they've been doing. So, uh, the table at the front here... It's all topics together, whatever you were discussing on that table. The key points. Yeah, just, um, we've got, I've got some people here from Zest in uh, Walkley, very close to the Ponderosa. Um, and uh, we talked about, anecdotally, that even, even people who live right next to the Ponderosa Park it, it won't necessarily use it. There are still barriers. And, and a key thing was kind of finding ways to break down these barriers. I think Zest, to an extent, it's been trial and error to find out how to get people, for example, to get involved in the nature group, to get involved in gardening. So really having to work at it and be creative to, to find ways to reach various groups to get them to get, you know, to actually use, use, use the parks and, and the various green initiatives. I think that was the key thing. Um, talked about things like, you know, uh, growing and allotments being quite middle class. They may not have been in the past, but being very middle class. But Zest, a lot of what you, they're delivering as an organisation is, is they've got to reach, you know, people more, people from more deprived communities, certain other, other people, other parts of the population. That's, that's very interesting. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> we're going to move on to the next group. But I just wanted to say, I think... Talk to me if you want to talk about allotments. I'm chair of the allotments advisory group for Sheffield. Um, and we have meetings every uh, three or four times a year. And um, what I, one thing I've noticed, I don't know about being more middle class, but certainly the age profile is changing. It is getting younger. I can say that. Anyone else would like to feedback from their table what they've been talking about over the last half an hour or so? Yes, so Brian on that, on that table over here. Both a couple of organisations, and um, this is probably a common theme, but how we can better um, share services and, and a sort of potential between different organisations 
I'm sure that goes on everywhere, but we just kind of ran through that. And, you know, you suddenly meet somebody, go, oh, I didn't know you'd do that. And they say, no, well, I didn't know you'd do what you do. But um, I suppose this, this community structure of meetings will, will help us because we're actually meeting face to face. So that's great. Um, I had a similar, we had a similar sort of conversation with Carl about sharing the contacts of all the LACs. Because um, I know an organisation like Earth, Percy Street Collective and other organisation help um, could offer services to support uh, young people and adults that are applicable to all the LACs. And we've wondered whether you share with each other what you do and share from here to all the other LACs and Carl's going to rebuild the website or something. <laughs> or to that effect. Um, anyway, so that was a good conversation. And then we've talked about generally about the, the it would be nice to have opportunities for more community gardens and growing spaces in Neepsend and Kelham Island, which has quite a lot of concrete and car parks and things. And, and um, I know us and Kinka and other organisations, ANSES, would love to uh, get involved in that if there are more spaces identified. But it, I know there's been uh, attempts on that in the past, and it is quite difficult, I know. But that would be wonderful if we could even identify some quite sm small spaces. Because I think what, what Kinka have done in areas around uh, Little Kellam and what we've done as an organisation up at the Alder with, you know, creating growing spaces for food um, in areas that look quite uncompromising. You know, we, we built a herb garden on concrete slabs. So that was a general conversation we had. <clears throat> Thank you very much uh, for that. I think there's a couple of things that strike me. Uh, is that I know the LAC officers have team meetings where they, where they do exchange information amongst each, each LAC, so the seven LACs do it in that form. Uh, what was the other thing I was thinking about? Uh, I, think, I think for small spaces that, are, that seem to be going spare, that's partly a conversation with, um, with parks, communities and leisure. And, and you know, uh, that's communication as well, which I've just been talking about with Howard from, uh, from Ward's End Cemetery and making sure that the communication is good uh, between the different committee groups. Which it sometimes isn't. Uh, okay, any feedback from uh, another group? Anyone want to put the hand up? Yes, please, thank you. Um, we were quite interested uh, listening to the first group when they were talking about green spaces not necessarily being safe because there's currently a project happening in the Upper Thorpe area on Philadelphia Gardens. Um, with this group here, Kerry and Josh from yep. Wilder Neighbourhoods, where we've talked about opening up sight lines into the park. I don't know if anyone's familiar with the park, but it's a massive green space area where there is a, there is swing, uh, uh, other play equipment, trim trail stuff. But there's a, it's a path where people can go walking all the way through the gardens, and it's a valuable use of space, but people don't feel safe. So uh, they've been successful in getting some ward pot funding uh, to be able to plant some wildflower seeds and uh, generally make the space a lot more pleasant and safe uh, for everyone. Um, because as you walk along Fox Road and look into, into the park, um, you can't actually see into the park. It's just it's the trees, so they're going to lower the sight lines, put the trees back so that it feels more space and open and encourage the community to come along and do um, seed planting, wildflower seed planting. And they've also got some ranger days put in, which anybody can go along and do and take part in gardening activities and help clear the space. And Josh has got some leaflets here that you can hand out uh, with regards to that. Okay. Brilliant, thank you. Uh, and is, are the email contacts on the... Um, the leaflet and your, your email contacts are they on the on the leaflet so how would they manage to get hold of you okay and just when is the day and Okay, 
Can you let Claire here have a copy of the leaflet? So. <laughs> Brilliant, we've got, a, we've got a copy of the leaflet and we can get those dates down so they're in the record. Okay, any more feedback? Uh, yes, table uh, over near the bar area. Uh, I'm uh, Jean from Hillsborough. Three of my group are Hillsborough. So we were talking about possible learning um, activities in and around Hillsborough for learning about wildlife and uh, maybe planting, growing. Someone suggested um, if someone knew about the trees in Hillsborough Park, for an example, so a walk around Hillsborough Park, learning about the trees in Hillsborough Park. And that could go on to um, sessions in the wall, in Hillsborough Walled Garden for learning uh, what plants and trees are and uh, how to look after them. And then we could possibly have children in from schools uh, to do the same sort of thing. Um, in, um, in the Walled Garden, we've got um, those buildings now and there's a classroom where we could do um, various activities. So something around learning about our environment and pass it, uh, groups passing that information on to everybody. Shall I just mention about Wards End? Thank you. Sorry. I'm Howard. I'm chair of Friends of Wards End Cemetery. Um, and we, believe it or not, we are in Hillsborough. We're quite sort of cut off, but we are in Hillsborough. Is that I'm quite too close? Um, and uh, for those of you that don't know, I mean, Wards End is on the banks of probably the most beautiful stretch of River Don in the city. Um, it has a, 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 vast, a quite a wide variety of habitats uh, because we're on the river, we've got woodland, we've got heathland, we've got acid grassland. Um, and we already do a lot of activities because Wards End is a wonderful mix of nature and heritage. And we work with the Wildlife Trust and we do uh, bird, monthly bird surveys. Everybody's welcome to come to those. We have monthly volunteer sessions. We've got one this Saturday. All our activities are on our, on our website. You just look for the what's on bit on our website. We do nature walks with a fungi walk coming up with the Sorby Fungi Group um, at the beginning of November. We've put 12 bird boxes up over the last couple of years, and we have a qualified ringer who's on our committee. And we, last year we ringed 40 odd. Uh, 40 odd. They're all blue ticks actually, but 40, 40 odd chicks. Um, we've recognised 47 different species in the cemetery, um, so it's an amazing place to sort of enjoy uh, the wildlife, but it's an amazing place to learn about it as well. And we do a lot of sessions with um, the schools, we've done stuff with the with Hillbrook Primary School, we do a River Guardians project with the Doncaster River Trust down there, we've had BioBlitz events. Um, we're hoping that we can get an environmental centre, a small environmental centre down just opposite the cemetery. That's something we're working on at the moment. Um, but there's a lot going on. It's just a lot of people don't, they feel quite detached from it, I think. Mm -hmm. um, so we just, you know, we're just trying to get the word out there, really. Um, and uh, so just look at our website and have a look at what's on the page. Thank you very much, Howard. Um, <clears throat> And have we got uh, someone who wanted to... I just wanted to say that, what you said, exactly what you said. I feel like everyone... Thank you very much. Was it, was it Josh? Yeah. Okay. Thank you for that, Josh. Throwing it out there, there is already a, what's called a green and open spaces network in Sheffield. Uh, so if you're not aware of that, that's going. 
uh, and they meet once every two months, I think it is. Used, they used to be based in the Arts Tower, and they, have, and they may have other venues. Um, so that could be a focus for joined up thinking. Or is it more of like an open, like event-based public thing? You know what I mean? Like, is it because we all, again, we are the people who are providing this, and are we just attracting the same people? Or is it a kind of thing which attracts people in because maybe there's a fun activity going along with it? Like, I, I, that, just a question, sorry. It's a very good question. Thank you, Joe. Uh, Katza, are you, have you been recently, so you, you, you can tell me what it's like these days? I haven't been for about three years. I haven't been to the Green Open Spaces Network, but one of the thoughts I've got running through my mind when we're talking about, you know, the pockets of activity, when we're talking about the really strong thread of public health and well-being and support for mental health, I'm thinking about the friends groups, you know, huge network of, of friends groups, part, friends of the parks, friends of the woodlands, friends of the cemeteries, friends of the nature reserves. And I think that's a focus for us. We've talked about having a... Um, an even broader interactive map where anybody looking for an activity to support health, well-being, we're making some progress. So I would say have a look online if you're wanting to know how to reach out for your activities. Some of it can be done locally, but a lot of people just look online. They're just looking on their phones. So have a look at things like, so for us, it's the, it's the wildsheffield.com website. Look for green social prescribing on there. We've got Sheffield, Rotherham, Barnsley, Doncaster directories. We can add any activities into those directories. And I'm thinking, you know, when this funding goes and the rounds of funding and the grant rounds and, and you know, when that's not there necessarily, it is the, the infrastructure of the Green and Open Spaces Networks. It's the voluntary sector support. It's the friends groups that are still going to be there. And I, I think we have to find a way to bridge that. And I think there is a lot of conversation going on similar to this in other areas as well. I've had conversations with Sheffield uh, Mind and also the Sheffield Aches and Pains uh, website which is newly launched and they're talking about having a green section so that when it comes to you know what else can we do for aches and pains beyond exercise beyond medication etc we can get out and get active and, and get involved in some of these things so I think there's a it's like fungi under the ground you know this whole network of connections and these events are brilliant for it we need to get it online as well and, and I think it's a case of looking, and that's part of my role, is encouraging and training the health professionals, the link workers, people in the NHS, GPs, to know where to look, just to be aware. Some, some are more than others, and sometimes that's just a personal preference. If you're a person who gets outdoors yourself, you're more likely to know about it and encourage other people to do it. So, yeah, I think there are, like the Green Open Space Network, which I think is more around the council-owned green open spaces and woodlands, and there's lots of other activity going on in communities. So we'll try and link them up, but it goes both ways, like make it visible online so people can see it as well. Leaflets are great, um, and we can try and do some more joined up online directories, I think. And I should also mention on behalf of Lucy, the Nature Recovery Community Action Map. That is something that's very much accessible for anybody to put their activities onto, monthly work days, one-off events in parks, etc. Um, and there's also a Sheffield Nature Recovery newsletter, and anybody can contribute a little piece to that. So get in touch. I can't remember if it's nature, is it nature recovery at wildsheffield.com? I'm guessing yeah. something like that. But have a look for it online because that is growing. That's newish and growing. So there's lots of networks to plug into out there. Is that all right? A bit of a plug there. Thank, thank you, Kessa. Give <clears throat> um, these leaflets and have a look as on, well. On the nature recovery map, when I took glanced over it just then, it looked like there was a lot of focus in the southwest of the city. Uh, so we want to make sure that those activities that are happening in other areas of the city are reflected on that map. So, so if you are organising something in this part of the city, for example, then uh, make sure it's on there. Um, so uh, I wanted to mention about the... Uh, yes, I'm going to move on to the other feedback, don't worry. Um, but. For the moment, I just wanted to mention that we, the public questions is coming up after. So if you've got something written on a piece of paper in front of you as a public question, please can you hand it to Abu or Andy even. Abu at the front, Andy at the back. So if you've got anything there, can you do that now? And if there is any more feedback, uh, yes, please. 
I just wanted to share a little story about the impact of gardening and mental health, because that's the essence of what you've been talking about. So I saw a lady on the stall a couple of weeks ago. She had the worst health anxiety I've seen for a long, long time. So we kind of turned this conversation around to what brings you joy? Can you remember when you were happy? When did you feel relaxed? She talked about gardening with her granddad when she was a little girl. And her face was completely transformed, really smiling. I said, right, that's where we need to get you back to. We need to get you back to that joy. Now, I didn't have a clue where to look. I basically Googled community gardens. And there was a few things there. So if you're trying to share all this information, and the value is definitely there, I've literally seen a woman transform just talking about it. Have you thought about going through the VAS email? These meetings sound great, but we're all really busy people. And it's not that I'm not passionate about it. It's just I literally don't have the time to attend everything. But if you put it on the VAS health bulletin every month, I will quickly read through that and think, oh, that's where I can find that information for my clients. So that's just a thought. Thank you very much, and I'm glad you've come to this one. Made the time to come to this one. Uh, so I think there was a last table that would like to uh, say something. What we were billed as about five years ago. Uh, nobody's mentioned that tonight. Um, but we've got a fantastic city with some great green spaces. Um, if I could ask the gentleman, could you search for a film called the John Muir Award film? It's only three minutes. If we get a chance after, you could put that on and show everybody. It's really inspiring. Um, so our group said that, what do they get from the outdoors? They said relaxation, calm, peacefulness. Uh, then somebody said, actually, it makes the mill because of uh, health issues they've got and health indicators such as breathing and allergies. So obviously we have to make sure that people are suitably uh, questioned before they go into these uh, activities and so on. Um, we also said that reflection, reflective practice while you're out in the outdoors works really well. Uh, achievement and challenges. And also when you're in the outdoors you don't need to be uh, buying drugs or using drugs because the natural drugs in your body kick in, those being endorphins, serotonin, oxytocin and dopamine. Um, the guys on our table also said that, uh, you know, audio-wise, uh, birds and different animals that they hear and see. Um, all of us, when we're walking around without realising, are probably taking in about two million images a day. Uh, so a lot of the things that we see while we're out in the great outdoors... Um, reflect on you know our thoughts and so on uh, the fresh air as well obviously all that fresh air and activity improves your sleep quality uh, and your recovery to things as well uh, it's a real grounding experience in the outdoors and very rewarding and fulfilling uh, it's also Daisy came up with this which was an excellent point that we'd not covered yet which was going in the outdoors most of it is free uh, and also it's highly engaging and community building, uh, working with others and interacting together. Uh, the guys here, what we're mentioning about Hillsborough, yeah, the Bradbury Makers Shed uh, in Hillsborough Park next to the, uh, to the walled garden is absolutely fantastic resource. And uh, the money that you pay for that uh, goes straight to Age Concern. So if you are going to run a little meeting... Uh, go and see the guys there and uh, hire it. It's a fantastic bit of kit. Uh, the next question then was local area. What's in our local areas? So we came out with things like forest schools with young children going into the uh, wooded areas and so on and doing shelter building and other little team tasks. Gardening, allotments, river walks, mind mindfulness, pockets of greenery here, there and everywhere. Uh, Things like uh, a walk, uh, a blue loop walk, or something like that. Guided walks by, you know, specialists and historians and so on. Uh, there's also some, like, little beacons that are made in Sheffield, somewhere near Hallam University, and they actually then can link into an app, which then tells you bits of history as you go around a the walk. There's also the uh, river walk, uh, there's the canals, uh, rambling groups, and then a lot of school people get involved in the Duke of Edinburgh's award. 
however, that's not until they, they're older. So if young people are looking for activities to do, there is another award called the Advent, Adventure Service Challenge, which is 8 to 12 years old, which engages people younger, obviously, uh, and it's you know less prohibitive. There's something that's really good, and the, the film that I've asked to be put on, the John Muir Award, is something that I'd encourage the council to start trying to get some of our young people through. Uh, and the John Muir, well, the John Muir Award, for those who don't know, is uh, there's different levels of the award, but uh, John, John Muir was one of the first ecologists uh, that, that they know of. Uh, it's a really good uh, thing to get people interested in. And then the last bit of this uh, thing was, what would we like to see in their areas, we'd like to see more plants, better housing design and development and to, to build communities and safety, living spaces with vision, better litter, um, it, well, instead of like, you know, dropping it in the first instance, let's get back to basics, you know, the three R's, uh, respect yourself, respect other people, and take responsibility for your own actions. And then uh, part of the John Muir Award, just going back to that, we used to do things like community projects, clearing graveyards, helping like aged people, you know, were struggling to maintain the gardens and just, just giving back, paying back a little bit for free. And then coming to the last few points, guys, sorry. Uh, yeah, uh, Daisy was saying about having some pride in our city. Daisy's from Portsmouth, but she's very proud about being in Sheffield and she re recognises and realises what a great city we've got. Sometimes us Sheffielders are our own worst enemies and we can be you know, quite demeaning about our own city, but we've got a lot to offer, but we don't sing about it enough and you know, we, we should be more loud and proud about what we've got here. Um, it's about taking accountability of everything that we do uh, and then to avoid apathy, it's important that we work on the points that people give us to work on and not just ignore them. Street trees was mentioned, planting, greenery, and then again, Daisy, the star of the evening. Uh, seed bombing, she was telling us, where is where you get a bag of this, uh, you know, wild flowers and seeds, and you go to areas of grass that aren't for anything else, not football pitches, by the way, and you, uh, you just, like, release the seeds from the bag and then put the bag in the bin. Uh, and it, it will, you know, seed some of the areas and make really um, dynamic, um, lasting areas, which people get a lot of pleasure out of. I'm, I'm really sorry, we're going to have to move Bear with on. there, mate. So, um, yeah. we're happy to take your feedback, what's written down. Yeah, sorry about that. Man. That's fine. It's all right. It's obviously, I'm amazed at how much work you've put into this. You know, you need a round of applause. It's just <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> But what we can do is uh, gather in your, your feedback forms. Uh, I'm sorry, we're going to have to move on to the next bits. So we'll try and finish by eight. Um, so thank you, and thank you for that. Um, so make sure that, that it comes over to Claire, the information, and she can make sure she's got captures that because there's such a lot that was in there. What we're going to move on to now is uh, there's a section called uh, item 10, which is public questions and any petitions. Now, we've had one, one, uh, one question here that's come from the floor, uh, which is from Brian. Is it Brian? Yeah. yeah. Now, Brian, what we're going to do is get back to you with a more detailed response on that, which is about, you know, what are the small community growing spaces in our local areas? So we'll, we'll, we'll get a response to you on that one. And the deal, I'll task you with, with doing that, if that's okay. Okay, thank, thank you. Item 11. Minutes of the previous meeting. This is a bit of administration, which, uh, which I'm sure all our councillors have, have gone through the minutes and had a look and approved them from last time. It's all agreed? Yeah. Okay, so we can take that one off. That's, that's done. Um, and then item 12 is uh, dated next meeting, and I'm going to give some more thank yous, actually, as well. So the next meeting of the Central Local Area Committee will be held on Thursday, the 28th of November, 6 p.m. Uh, thanks to the work of Daisy, mentioned again. <laughs> How embarrassing. We've worked with Daisy and with other people in the Students' Union to... 
host the next um, Central Light meeting. Uh, it'll be in the Broomhill and Sharavay ward because we rotate around the four wards, uh, four meetings a year. And we are working in partnership with students to be able to organise this. There'll be a focus on Sheffield and on a Sheffield for young people. That's going to be the focus of it. So uh, I've been promised there's going to be a lot of folks coming along to that. Um, and Daisy and, and others have been working with uh, their students, uh, student focus bodies, uh, the, little, uh, the networking groups that you've got there. And we're going to be sharing more details of that in due course, so you'll get full information about that. We booked the foundry, which is the largest room uh, the Students' Union has, so I'm hoping for a good turnout. And can I thank everyone who's come along today and contributed? There's some brilliant stuff. If we got the feedback forms, then there's even more work for Claire to do in transcribing those uh, and getting the details. And uh, I'm, I'm, I, as we're going through, I'm thinking, how do you spell serotonin? And, uh, <laughs> just, anyway, we'll, we'll work on that and, and getting that in the minutes. So thank you to all the groups who've come along today. Uh, and also thank you to uh, Yellow Arch, who have hosted here, and it's made such a difference coming to a place like this. Uh, I, I felt it's, it's been really, really good for networking. It's encouraged networking because of the type of space we've got here. Um, and uh, so thank, thank you to everyone here. Can, can we all give ourselves a, a, a set of round of applause? And we finished slightly ahead of time, which is amazing. <laughs>